Come on, everyone, I'm Sis, and Dark Souls is one of those games that completely evolved the gaming industry when it got released. In fact, it was so popular that it somehow even made a new subgenre of video games, the Soulsborn games. And while I have tried to find a definitive meaning to the term, I can't seem to find a proper one. So. I made one myself, Soulsborne Games, a series of video games to which completely relies on the statement, difficult, but fair. Or in layman's terms, why the f*** <laughs> is this game so hard and why do I keep on playing them? Soulsborne Games is often seen as a niche genre because it makes sense. Why would you keep on playing a game that obviously hates you and doesn't want you to progress any further? But that's why I find it so charming. That doesn't make me a masochist. It just means that at the end of the day, for every obstacle I run into within the game, it will be a lot more rewarding for me if I manage to beat that sad obstacle all by myself. That shot of dopamine you get for every challenge you overcome within the Soulsborne games is why I think the series of video games keeps on growing up to the point that it even spawned a new genre. But nobody really cares about that. What you are looking for is a beginner's guide video on Dark Souls, and since the Prepare to Die edition is currently unavailable and would probably remain that way forever, the only copy of the game you would get would be the remastered one, which is fine. It's actually better in some instances. They fix a lot of the issues found in the old game, kind of, not really, but they did unlock the frame cap to 60 FPS, which is always nice. And so, to help you guys and for those who are planning to try this game for yourselves, I made this video. The rules, the guidelines, or simply, the do's and don'ts. This is... Again, for those who don't know, Dark Souls is part of the series of video games that spawned the Soulsborne genre. Which means, this game is super hard. Very hard. Just kidding, it's really easy to say that the Soulsborne games are extremely difficult, but like I said, Soulsborne games are supposed to be like that. Difficult, but fair. It has to be both. It can't just be a fair game, and it can't just be a difficult game. I keep on saying this because you really have to get this mindset to get started on playing the game. It's okay to be pissed off, but it's unfair to blame the game for your own errors. If it's just difficult as f**k, nobody would really love the game. If it's just fair, it won't be as memorable. It has to be both. And Dark Souls managed to find that sweet spot. Now. Dark Souls has been there for quite some time now, so I assume you already have a general gist of the game. And I'm also gonna put it out there that if you're new to gaming and one of your friends recommends you to play this game as your first ever video game, you might want to reconsider your group of friends. That would actually be funny if someone does actually do that to you. I feel like I would do that. Maybe that's why I don't have friends. I'll be tackling more on the mechanics and numbers concerning the game along with some basic information on how the game works. This is solely a beginner's guide and not an expert's guide. I sincerely feel that these types of games are the kinds of games that you should experience on your own without hand-holding. And as such, I'll only disclose the things that would help you on the first few hours of the game. I'll also link some of the more in-depth guides I found on YouTube, just to help those who really need more of an in-depth and vivid explanation. Anyways, let's get started. This Soulsborne game particularly is a third-person action RPG. You explore a huge interconnected world, you fight enemies, you level up, gather weapons, fight more enemies, solve puzzles, Kind of, it doesn't actually have puzzles. Obtain gold, buy more weapons and armor, upgrade those weapons and armor, throw them away because you realize they suck, find something better, upgrade them again, level up your character, and then explore more of the world which contains some especially difficult boss battles scattered in that said world. Some of them optional, some of them missable, which doesn't really matter since you're gonna have to find those bosses if you really want to complete this game, like most people who play these types of games. I'm gonna focus on character creation, leveling up, exploration, humanity, combat, and the basics of weapons and armor statistics. And with that, let's start with character creation. Here's the thing about Dark Souls, when it comes to character creation, there's only 4 things that you can change and switch around, but only 2 of them would impact your character, and even then, it will pretty much impact it in a significantly small way in the long run. First is character class. 
I personally don't think your character class matters all that much as the game is very flexible on building your character. The starting class mostly indicate what kind of skills and equipment your character is going to have at the start of the game and it doesn't necessarily define what you are. Unfortunately, all the stats present in the game cannot be reallocated and as such, it's highly recommended that you guys think about which attribute points you're gonna allocate your character. As each point is extremely important to micromanage as every point could mean life or that, I'll talk about the character stats on the leveling up section of the video, but for now, I'm just laying out what it all means. Second thing you might want to know more about are gifts, or more specifically the starting gifts that your character is going to have at the start of the game. Like classes, it doesn't really matter which one you pick once you reach mid to late game, but if you really really want to know more about classes and gifts, I'll leave links to videos to which someone has already made and is a lot more in depth than this video can provide. Basically, what I'm saying is whatever you pick from any of these classes won't really matter at all in the long run. Starting classes are just that, starting classes, a preset class to which your character would have the skills and equipment based on it. Now, I'm not saying that it's not important, actually it is quite important if you already have a specific playthrough that you want to go with, a spellcaster, a tank, a fast striking samurai, if you know what you want to be, starting classes would do really well if you pick the right starting class but if you really don't you don't know what to do or not know what class to pick don't worry about it you're gonna be fine but again if you really want to know more about class differences I highly recommend watching these videos. A starting class guide made by Valeria which would help when getting to know the starting class presets better and Mako and Co starting gifts guide to help you better understand what each gift does. It would really help you a lot. Leveling up in Dark Souls is as easy as defeating enemies through combat. Each time you kill a kill, you kill a kill. <laughs> Each time you get a kill, you'll receive a specific amount of souls depending on which enemies you've defeated. Souls are basically the game's EXP and secondary currency. They can then be used to both level up and upgrade weapons and armor. To level up, you need to find a far shrine, light it up if it's not already lit, and kneel on it to level up. This would use up souls and the requirement of souls for each level would marginally go up for each time you level up. Take note that every time you kneel on a shrine, the whole world resets and revives every single enemy you fought and killed up to that point, no matter how difficult they were to defeat in the first place and would refill both your health and stamina. The only ones unaffected by this are bosses that are scattered around the world. It's a great mechanic that makes grinding for souls easier but also makes the game extremely difficult. Also, I sincerely advise people to don't hoard your souls for too long. If it reaches a certain soul requirement for leveling up, I advise that you do so ASAP. The reason for this is, interestingly enough, is the game's much beloved and hated mechanic. Every time you level up, you'll lose all your souls. You'll still keep your levels, but the souls you gained up to that point would be taken away from you. The only way to get it back is to go back and interact with the souls you've dropped exactly where you've died. If you've died from an enemy instead, you're gonna have to take those souls from the enemy that defeated you. If you sadly died before that, however, you'll lose all your souls in the process, which I'm gonna tell you right now, will happen unless you're extremely good at not dying it's inevitable back to those stats there are eight attribute stats that dictate what your character is there's vitality attunement endurance strength dexterity resistance intelligence and fate here's a quick explanation of what it all does vitality affects how much hp or hit points your character is going to have per point this is very self-explanatory and it's the stat that affects your health. Attunement affects how many attunement slots you can have. These are the slots in which you place your spells and other magic-based skills. Endurance affects how much stamina your character would have, how much equipment they can have equipped, and how fast they could move, attack, 
block, and dodge incoming attacks. Out of all the stats you have to worry about, this is the one stat you're gonna have to prioritize all the time depending on the types of equipment you have equipped. Strength affects how much damage you deal with strength-based weapons, dexterity affects how much damage you deal with dexterity-based weapons, intelligence affects how much damage you deal with intelligence-based weapons and to perform sorcery, and fate affects how much damage you deal with fate-based weapons and the performance of miracles. Other than that, there's also resistance that affects the character's defenses from fire, poison, and other physical attacks. When building your character level, I highly suggest and advise that you use a character stat calculator which is easy to find via Google search. And if this is your first playthrough, which I assume it is since this is a beginner's guide and you're watching it, is that you only focus on one weapon scaling stat. These are strength, dexterity, intelligence, and fate. In fact, you can't exactly equip a specific weapon until you reach its weapon scaling stat requirement. All weapons in the game calculate how much damage they do depending on how much points you've invested on that specific stat. And the higher and more focused the stat distribution is, the more damage you'll be able to dish out. Strength and Dexterity for physical damage, and Intelligence and Fate for magic damage. There are certain weapons that benefit from leveling up to completely different weapon scaling stats, but I highly advise not doing this unless you read about this any further or you absolutely know what you're doing. Again, much like character creation, I present to you Rob Dude's guide on how to level up and an in-depth guide to character stats. He did a really good job explaining this to people, even those who are playing on the Switch. There are other people who created a leveling up guide or a character stat guide, but personally, I find his videos the best. With that all dealt with, let's quickly talk about exploration. The whole world of Dark Souls is all interconnected. Every level, stage, and every area, whether you're in the basement or high above, they're all connected in some sort of way. The map design in the game is incredibly well done, and if you can't find a way to get to where you want to go, there's usually a much more niche way for you to get there. I advise that you explore every cavity in the game. You might find weapons, armors, fire shrines, NPCs, items, and all other neat and unique stuff. Be careful as you explore, however, as it's not entirely good as you can find enemies that are marginally stronger than you. So explore, but be smart about it. A good thing to keep in mind is that you'll occasionally find doors wherein there's some sort of fog that denies the sight from the other side. And that usually means it's an empty room waiting to be explored, but it can also be a boss battle waiting to steal all your souls. So yeah. Be careful around those, if you spot one, make sure you've spent up all your souls as it's an easy indication that it's a new area or boss battle, the latter not being what you want if you still have your souls on you. Humanity does a lot of multiple things that affects various aspects of the game, both offline and online. And if this is your first playthrough, I suggest, I humbly suggest, that you just keep it offline, as the online portion of the game can be both a good thing and a horrible, horrible thing. Here's the basics of what humanity does. Much like souls, you'll lose all your humanity if you die, but can easily be taken back much like how souls are. You gain humanity by defeating bosses, defeating other players, defeating a large number of enemies while the boss is still alive, consuming humanity dropped by enemies, but really, just by simply playing the game is enough. Again, like I said, Dark Souls is a difficult but fair game, and this is where Dark Souls ultimately shines. The combat. You can't exactly hack and slash your way to victory, instead you're gonna have to treat it like an actual battle, with patience and discipline. You can, of course, just run into bosses if deemed necessary, but more often than not, it's better to just take your time, slowly learn the enemy's moveset, and study its moveset. What? Never panic and always try to defeat enemies one by one to avoid getting overwhelmed and, you know, dying. Like real life. 
one of the most important factor when it comes to battles aside from health would be your stamina bar, as it dictates how much actions you can do before your character would get tired. He or she can't keep on fighting in for more than 10 seconds. Every time you attack, block, run, or roll, your stamina depletes itself, and while it recovers, you're gonna be vulnerable and completely limited on the actions you can perform. And that is why I recommend fighting one enemy at a time, as it helps you to have more breathing time to think. This is a smart game. You have to think to win fights. You can't just hack and slash your way to win, and that's why I love these types of games. Combat is actually pretty in-depth, and I usually advise people like myself to just casually learn the game as you play through it. But like I said multiple times already, Dark Souls is a game about learning and exploration. It teaches you to think, to learn to play the game as you play through it. However, it's true that there are people who just want to play the game immediately with everything already implanted in their heads. That's okay, I'm also like that to some extent when playing, you know, like civilization games. So here's another one of Rob Dude's videos on combat. In fact, after you finish this video, I highly suggest that you go through his channel and watch some of his Dark Souls videos as he has a lot of those and tackles each element and mechanics found in the game separately for each video with a lot more in depth. He also have a playthrough of the game if you want to go through them. They're really nice. In relation to combat, the weapons and armors you equip affect how you handle fights in the game. Literally. Your combat moves and attacks are dictated by the types of weapons you have equipped, meaning wielding a sword would be completely different from wielding an axe. In fact, even wielding two different swords can be extremely different from one another, so it's best to try out weapons and practice them before completely relying on them and leveling them up. Armor is a bit different, as you'll mostly need it to figure out which types of attacks those specific armors can resist or sometimes negate altogether. It could be magical or physical. You might even need specific armor sets on one boss and a different one on another, and as such, it's completely normal to keep on switching armors as you play the game. What you do have to check closely is how much weight those armors could give. Some armors are extremely heavy, which is usually coupled with great defenses, but also makes your character move a lot more sluggishly, so mixing and matching different armors would be your best bet. Now, there is this thing about weapon scaling and how important it is when you're looking for your ideal weapon, but I sincerely feel and believe that you should experience these mechanics on your own. All you need to know is that the higher the stat, the more damage it would normally deal, and it's mostly if not always true for all weapons. There are a lot of more things that I can go in depth about, specific things, items, rings, best weapons, armor, secret passages, hidden locations, cheesy win tactics, and as much as I want to talk about all these things, this is a beginner's guide, a guide to help players new to the game, something that would help them specifically in the first few hours. And I know I've been saying this too many times already, I really do sincerely think it's better for you as a player to learn about them on your own and just scare you with enough information you absolutely need as a new player. Trust me, it's a lot more rewarding learning about this stuff on your own, and it's really not that difficult. Just play the game. You'll naturally be better as you go through it and as you go on, and that's why I love this game and why most people love it. Dark Souls is a game about learning and exploration. Making a beginner's guide on every single aspect of the game just feels like it defeats the purpose of the game. It brings out the best in you, but then again, it also brings out the worst in you, so there's that. With that, however, I'll still try to sprinkle in a few tips and tricks that will help you as you explore the world of Dark Souls. Here's all the tips and tricks I've gathered, thought of, and found online. Minus the things that are better off experience as you play the game. You're going to die. It's just how it is. Even the most experienced players eventually mess up and die in the process, and there's nothing really wrong with that. The sooner you accept that, the easier your experience would be. Play a few hours at a time when deemed necessary. The worst thing you can do to yourself is to play the game when you're angry, hungry, tilted, or worse, all of the above, 
all at the same time, so take a break, it's okay, you'll feel a lot better for your next playthrough. Use the locked-in mechanic. There's a lot of enemies in the game, and you won't always be in a one-on-one -on -one combat scenario. A good included mechanic in the game, however, is the locked-in feature, which would help on focusing your attacks in one enemy at a time. Don't rely on one defense mechanic the whole game. Don't just dodge, don't just roll, don't just block, and don't just parry. You can use all of those. And you'll find out that mixing up your combat style would help in learning what the enemies can and cannot do. Explore! Look around! The game world is huge, and not everything would just be laid down for you to be picked up and found. Some are hidden, some items are really specific to acquire, so again, just get out and explore. Hit enemies from above. You'll be amazed at how much damage a downward attack can do to your opponents. You can even deal almost half of the boss's health as damage, which would help in making the fight shorter and easier. Like I said, don't hoard your souls for too long. If you can use it right then and there, it's just better that you do. You'll just be risking souls and more importantly, time. Read messages. Around the map, you'll find messages written on the ground made by players. Some are helpful and are genuinely there to help players. Some, to be honest, not really that much. I'm not advising you guys to do everything that the message says. That would be a really, really bad idea. I'm just saying that if you do read them, you're gonna have a, to put it simply, a basic idea on what's going on around you. Upgrade the number of Estus Flask by using your humanity. Obviously, the more Estus Flask you have, the more health you can recover. Talk to people, repeatedly if necessary. They will have wise words to share and can even give you hints on how to push forward. Some NPCs sell things, some lets you do other things. The key point in all of this is that the world of Dark Souls can be a very sad and desolate place. Talking to some of the occupants can be a very good way to learn about the lore and story. Balance both mobility and defense when choosing your armors. Having a decent amount of both is always better than having the best of one, unless you're a glass cannon. Keep a homeward bone with you at all times. This will teleport you to the last bonfire you visited and will help a lot when you get yourself stuck in a horrible situation. Don't be afraid to summon friends for help. In fact, one of the first boss battles you're gonna be encountering would be too hard for new players. Luckily, there should be a summoning option right outside that specific boss battle. And just a quick hint on which boss battle I'm talking about, it's the one on the rooftop with bells. Get the Drake Sword. It's a good starting sword for early to mid game and can be found and acquired from the first dragon you'll encounter. How you'll get it? Well, I'll leave that to your imagination and your skill set googling. Find the right weapon for you. Someone's ideal weapon might not be the weapon for you. It's all about how we all play, so again, I advise trying them all out before sticking to one. Stay calm. It's fine. It's chill. It's just a game. Why you all have to be mad? Keep a sh- <coughs> Oh my god. What the hell was that? Keep a shield handy. It's always nice to have one available when you really need one. If you go through the tutorial well, you'll know that you can actually two-hand your weapon for more damage. Learn to parry. I ain't gonna tell you how to parry. There should be a good tutorial in the game. You can backstab enemies by circling around that said enemy. This will result in a powerful stabbing attack, which is always nice to have. Also note that it doesn't work on all enemies. Are you more into magic? That's fine. If you're new, try out the pyromancy first. It's a good starting class and it will help you better understand how spells work in the game, including both the benefits and disbenefits. Is that a word? I think that's a word. Yeah, that's a word. Attune your spells. You'll have to attune them and slot them in a bonfire before you can actually use them in combat. Just a quick tip. Upgrade your gear. There are multiple ways how you can upgrade your gear and you can really never go wrong with this. That's a lie, but don't worry, a quick Google search for the weapon you have equipped is all you need. So just Google it. If the chest's position is kinda off, hit it. Just hit it once. You'll thank me later. Once you get out of the tutorial area, if you get out of the tutorial area, you'll be dropped in a good starting position with three possible ways to move forward. The obvious one is past the well above the hill. That's the right one. Don't go to the graveyard, and especially don't go under the shrine. That's an easy way to die. 
the tutorial area might seem extra difficult, but trust me, it's a good thing that you have an idea on what the game is now rather than later on. It actually does a really good job on being mysterious about the game, but at the same time convey hints, tips, and tutorials, so just take it. Read the messages on the ground and I'm sure you can get through it. I believe in you. The last tip I can give you is actually related to the last tip I just gave, and that is to read. Reading is one of the most powerful skills both in game and in the real world. If you can read, then you can think, and if you can think, then you can defeat anyone who opposes your way. Oh, that's a good quote. Oh my god. What? Holy shit, what? But yeah, read. Just read, it's fine. If you can read, you won't really need to go back to this video a second time. Read the description of items, skills, abilities, weapons, armors, rings, stories, sequences, lore, read, and listen. It's the best advice I could give. And that's it. Dark Souls is one of those games that vastly changed how I view games. Because of Dark Souls, I started to see games as an art, a world, an idea. They became thinking opportunities and a way to significantly change how a game would feel and could feel to play, if that makes sense. Video games are a great medium, and I'm glad that I can experience it with those eyes. Starting with... Dark Souls. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Like the video if you don't dislike it, and dislike if you don't like it. Share it with your friends, and if you do like it, please consider subscribing to the Phantom Heart for more. That would really help a lot. <laughs> I'm Sis, and thank you for watching.